So the January transfer window is well underway, and with just a week left to go until the deadline, this year has been very slow in terms of transfers, and that's most likely down to COVID. Now, clubs' finances have taken a huge hit without fans going to games, um, and that's been showcased with the lack of money being spent. They simply can't spend as much as they used to. However, there are some movements, and there has been some confirmed transfers, and in this video, we'll take a look at what's happened so far, this transfer window, and what could potentially happen uh, come the end of it. Now, before we start on transfers, uh, last week Wayne Rooney announced his retirement from football. What an incredible career he has had. Top goal scorer for both club and country, with plenty of medals and trophies to go with it. Makes me feel old watching all these players uh, start to retire now, the ones I used to grow up watching. Um, yeah, but that's life, I guess. Anyway, getting into it, I'm actually starting with a Manchester United player. Um, and this one has been a confirmed transfer from about a week and a half ago. Timothy Fossumensa. It's a done deal, £1.8 million move to Bayer Leverkusen, who currently sit third in the Bundesliga. There was interest from Ajax, Berlin and Marseille, um, but I think this is a good move for the young lad. The Bundesliga is a great place for development, um, as we've seen the likes of Sancho, Nabry and Haaland uh, progress there. Mensch has played 30 times for Man United, debuting in a 3-2 win against Arsenal in 2016. Another confirmed transfer uh, last week was over in Spain. Atletico Madrid have uh, signed Lyon forward Moussa Dembele on loan until the end of the season. The French forward has caught the eye of many European giants these past couple of years, but uh, Madrid is his destination for the next six months. This is a possibility, uh, this move, to become permanent at the end of the season for £29.6 million. Um, Dembele will wear the number 19 shirt, which recently just belonged to Diego Costa before the Spanish giants terminated his contract. After leaving in 2018, Moussa Dembele scored 21 goals with 6 assists in his debut season for Lyon and followed up with 24, assists, uh, 24 goals sorry, and 7 assists in the second season. If he carries on scoring like this uh, with Atletico Madrid, then I'm sure he'll become even more well-known and could potentially replace the boots of former French forward at Atletico before he moved to Barcelona, Griezmann. Now, moving closer to home and my team Arsenal, we have a done deal and that was confirmed today. Matty Ryan has completed a short loan move to Arsenal from Brighton. The Australian goalkeeper, he's been, decent, he's been a decent talent uh, in the Premier League and he's also shown his pedigree in Europe with Genk and Valencia. The number one Aussie goalkeeper will wear the number 33 shirt and I think he'll provide great cover for Leno. He won't be number one, but that's good, uh, that's good competition for Leno. And in my opinion, he's definitely a better backup than Runnison right now because the young Icelandic lad is, is just not ready for our level yet. Now, Meza Ozil and Fenerbahce. Christ, this has gone on for ages. Only a matter of time now. He's arrived in Fenerbahce, he's taken loads of photos with the club memorabilia. Everyone knows he's going to leave. Pictures on him on social media, um, on Fenerbahce's social media, of him going to Turkey with cartoons and stuff. You've even got Lacazette and Aubameyang like, fighting over the number 10 shirt on Instagram. Arsenal, they've been absolutely mute. Nothing from them whatsoever. The whole Ozil situation is past year and so and so years past. It's been a complete and utter mess, <laughs> but that's another topic and video. Um, Ozil was praised in Turkish football, uh, stating that I grew up in Turkey as a Fenerbahce fan. Before I retire and when my contract is up at Arsenal, I want to play in America and Turkey. It's even been reported that in the Fenerbahce uh, camp that they've offered Ozil's wife a role in Turkish television. But yeah, it won't be long now until that transfer saga is over and all parties can move on from this complete mess. It's just, as I've said, it's just gone on for too long now. He will wear the number 67 shirt, which um, where, which is the postal code for where he grew up in Turkey. Um, but that's only until the summer where he will go back to his number 10 because that's his brand. You see it everywhere, M10 Esports, M10 Clothing. Players nowadays, they, they have a number and they take it and they use it for, for all kinds of things. Now, someone who might be replacing Ozil, uh, and he's also from Real Madrid like Mesut, is in the name of Martin Erdegaard. Come out recently, very strong links that this young creative Danish midfielder is close to confirming a short-term short -term loan move to the Emirates in the next coming days. As I said, this story has really picked up over the last couple of days, and it's really looking likely now, as um, Fabrizio Romano has even stated that Erdegaard was tempted by Arsenal and has ultimately chose the Gunners uh, with the help from his family. Sticking with Arsenal, um, come out a couple of days ago, Socrates has been released by the club, mutual consent. He's made 69 appearances for the Gunners, scoring six times. 
He was signed for free by Arsenal in July the 2nd, 2018, after leaving Dortmund on a free, and subsequently now leaves Arsenal on a free too. Genoa and Real Betis are interested in Socrates, um, but it's believed the Greek defender would prefer to go to Real Betis to link up with his former uh, centre-back teammate that he had at uh, Borussia Dortmund, Mark Bartra. Now we've mentioned Wayne Rooney, but I'm going to move on to a different English attacking midfielder from Man United, who's also looking for change, and that is Jesse Lingard. He was potentially on the move to Nice on loan, but that deal has fallen through and broken down. Um, nice have ultimately pulled out. Uh, the 27-year-old has recently started in Man United's 1-0 win uh, in the FA Cup game against Watford, but he hasn't played a Premier League game in 13 months for the Red Devils. In my opinion, it would be an ideal move for all parties, um, as we all know the quality of Bruno Fernandes since he's turned up. And with the likes of Pogba, Van der Beek, Scott McTominay in the midfield, all fighting for places, even Fred and Matic, United have a, an absolute abundance of midfielders, um, but yeah, this still looks dead in the water, which is a real shame, because I can't see Lingard starting for United this season, and if he wants to play football, he's got to move. Now lastly, and keeping with an English player, uh, it's Tomori. AC Milan have signed Chelsea's Tomori on loan until the end of the season. The young English defender is on his way out to Italy with AC Milan, but only on loan. Uh, they have the option, actually, Milan to make the permanent transfer for a fee of 25 million. Tomori has hardly featured for Frank Lampard's Chelsea's side this season and a line move has been completed. Leipzig were also interested in the Chelsea defender, but the Serie A giants have, com have secured him with uh, a loan deal and a possibility to make that, um, to confirm that as a permanent transfer in the future, in the summer. But for now guys, that's all we're gonna cover. Um, like I said, it's been a bit dead this transfer window so far. But hopefully the next coming the next coming week and or things like eight eight nine days, hopefully we do see more deals come through and hopefully hopefully we see some bigger deals come through. I'm really hopeful of getting Erdegaard because we Arsenal do need a creative midfielder. Um, but yeah, I'll make another video next week and hopefully um, there's more deals coming through. Um, and yeah, subscribe, like and comment. Cheers, guys.